February of 1994, St. Petersburg, Russia. On the stairs of one of the apartment buildings, a body was found that belonged to a nine-year-old boy. The attacker didn't care that someone could have seen him. Everything happened during the day, when the boy just returned home from school. Hi friends, you're watching the Jonas channel, and before going further into this video, I want to warn you that some of the details of this case are so horrific that to this day, this case is not that widely covered by Russian media, and if you will find this video interesting, please leave a like and subscribe at the end. Soon after the first murder, another body was found. Again, a nine-year-old from St. Petersburg was approached by an unknown man who was able to get his trust. As it was later found out, this man told the boy that he can show him the pigeons that live in the attic of an apartment building. After he was able to get the boy into his trap, he assaulted him, and after it, he just tore boy's colon with his bare hands. The victim survived, but it made him disabled for his entire lifetime. The attacks were becoming more and more frequent, and soon, again, Two boys who were walking near the river Neva in St. Petersburg were taken to the remote area and assaulted. And this time the attacker again didn't kill his victims. Because of how everything was done, investigators realized that the actual first attack happened in the year 1993, where an unknown man approached three boys in the park and took out a knife. One of them got scared and instantly ran away. But two other boys, who were brothers, were too afraid to run and were assaulted by the monster. Now everyone in St. Petersburg were demanding police to do something. But all of the victims who survived were so shocked and traumatized that they weren't able to reliably describe the attacker. Police were at the dead end, as they didn't have much evidence, so the only thing they could come up with was to start searching the attacker among the gay community of St. Petersburg, because all of the victims were boys. In the meantime, news anchors were asking people of St. Petersburg to be extra careful and not let their kids walk from school alone, and everyone was really scared to even let their children go for a walk. But at this point, the attacker couldn't stop and he didn't care that the whole town wanted him dead. In the late September of 1994, near one of the apartment buildings, a 15-year-old teenager was coming home from school. He was already followed by a man who entered the elevator after the boy. Right when the door closed, he hit this boy in the face, but the victim didn't lose consciousness and started fighting back. While they were fighting, the door opened, and the boy pushed the attacker and ran away. People were exiting their apartments because they heard loud noises, and this unknown man got scared and ran through the back door. But this failure excited him and didn't scare at all, so this man went to find another victim. He wasn't even thinking that he might be caught if he will attack in the neighborhood where he just tried to assault the boy. He noticed an 8-year-old boy near the next building on that same street. When the boy entered the building, this man just sneaked right after him through the closing door. As he was very slim and short, the boy didn't really feel threatened. Soon after it, this man entered the elevator after the boy. And as he did before, he attacked his victim right as the elevator door closed. He strangled his victim to the point that the boy was barely alive and took him on the elevator to the 15th floor which was a technical floor where no one lived at the time. There he assaulted his victim and again tore his body from the back with his bare hands. And he just took out 9 meters of the boy's colon and dumped it near the trash can. Then the attacker took the boy's school bag and ran away. But miraculously this boy survived, and he was even able to get up and get to his apartment that was located on the 13th floor, despite the fact that the boy was horribly injured and in a state of deep shock, not really understanding what happened. The horrified mother called for an ambulance and the boy was hospitalized. The doctors were fighting for the boy's life for six hours and they were able to stabilize his condition. But still, as you can imagine, the damage that was done to him was tremendous and he needed the transplantation of an artificial colon. And this kind of procedure was only possible in the United States of America. 
and it cost a gigantic sum of money for an average Russian family. But one of the American medical centers agreed to do this procedure for free. But still, the boy's family needed around $500,000 for transfer to the United States, accommodation, and other expenses. Soon, people in Russia found out about what happened and about the money that the boy's family needed. And this sum of money was gathered by the people in 10 days. The boy was sent to one of the medical centers in Pittsburgh, and doctors fought for his life there for six years. The boy survived through 30 procedures in an attempt to install an artificial colon. But in the year 2000, he died, right before another procedure. After the last attack, detectives were able to get the fingerprints of the attacker. Also, among all of the witnesses, they were able to find a girl who saw a man that followed the boy. And then a 15-year-old who was able to fight the attacker off gave a detailed description of him, and the identikit was created. And it was put all over St. Petersburg, and also in the papers and on the news broadcasts. And probably because of it, a breakthrough in an investigation happened. In November of 1994, a man called the police. He said that he recently rented his apartment to one of his acquaintances. And also the caller remembered that this man had, for some reason, a boy's school bag with him, despite the fact that he didn't have kids. And he also noticed that this school bag had huge blood stains on it, which made him feel more suspicious. 28th of November 1994, this man was arrested. It was 23-year-old Igor Irtyshov. He was, at the time, already living with another man, who was his lover, in the dormitory of one of the local factories. During the search, detectives found many bloodstains on the clothes and shoes Igor had. But for some time, Ertyshov was denying that he is guilty. But when he realized that the police has too much evidence against him, he started pretending that he is insane. He was constantly crying, and he was also asking to be put in the psychiatric facility so he could be treated. In the meantime, detectives needed to see if the victims will recognize Ertyshov. But all of the survivors of his attacks were just speechless when they saw him, and they were just running away. But later in the corridor, all of the children told their parents that Ertyshov was the man who assaulted them. When it became obvious that Ertyshov was the one who was killing and sexually assaulting kids, police were barely protecting him from the kids' parents who were ready to tear him apart. But what was the reason for such cruelty and brutality? Igor was born in 1971 in a small village called Hutar Krasny in the southern part of Russia. His parents were alcoholics, and his mother drank a lot during the pregnancy. And this was the probable reason that Irtyshov was growing up very weak and sickly. He was constantly brutally bullied by his peers. Igor's father left him when he was seven, and when he was 10, Irtyshov has gotten into a car accident, which led to a brain trauma that affected his development. Because of it, he was sent to the facility for mentally challenged, and his mother basically stopped taking care of her son after that. In this facility, Igor was also constantly bullied and beaten by everyone. And because he was short and skinny, he couldn't stand for himself. At some point, he was given some alcohol, and after it, was sexually assaulted by other kids there, which made Irtyshov even more traumatized. After school, he was working different low-paying jobs, which he was changing often. But everything changed when he met a man in the early 90s, who he dated for some time. And this man helped him move to St. Petersburg, which is the second largest city in Russia. There, Irtyshov found a job as a dishwasher in one of the restaurants, which was called Pegasus. Soon after it, Irtyshov broke up with his boyfriend. Then he was promoted and became a waiter in that same restaurant. Igor was having constant conflicts with all of his colleagues and was considered to be a scandalous and hysterical person. The Pegasus restaurant was also a place where local gay men gathered and met each other. And Igor was often noticed by clients and they sometimes proposed him to go somewhere later to meet for money. Igor started working as a prostitute. He changed his style, dyed his hair, and started buying expensive clothes. Mostly, Igor's clients enjoyed his services with a huge element of torture and sadistic tendencies. 
When Artyshov was arrested, he said that he was the one who was tortured. But detectives had some information that made them think that when he was a sex worker, Artyshov was, to most of the time, the one who tortured his clients. And apparently, he enjoyed it very much. And at some point, Artyshov just felt that all that he did to his clients wasn't enough, and he wanted more. In 1993, he started attacking boys. But only small ones, the ones who couldn't defend themselves. Maybe because he was assaulted as a child and he wanted to take it out on other children. After the assault of two brothers in the park, he didn't kill his victims. But on his second assault, Irtyshov said that he got carried away and strangled the boy because he was very drunk. Probably because he enjoyed it so much, Irtyshov's attacks were becoming more and more brutal. After the arrest, he desperately tried to get himself to be considered unfit for trial. The psychiatrist had another opinion, so he was taken to the normal court trial. It was very hard to find a lawyer for Irtyshov. No one wanted to defend him in court after lawyers were finding out what he did. Also, his cellmates wanted to kill him right there in his jail cell. So Irtyshov was put in a two-bed cell with a military deserter who ate another soldier during his escape from the military base. Irtyshov started acting insane all the time constantly crying, throwing feces at the jail guards. But in 1996, Igor Irtyshov was sentenced to an execution. But soon, Russia implemented a moratorium on executions, and the sentence wasn't carried out. Igor was sent to serve his sentence in one of the harshest prisons in Russia, where he is locked in a cell with another murderer. He harasses everyone in this prison with horrific screams lasting for hours, constant laughing, and sometimes he's just staring into the wall for hours. He hasn't shown any signs of normal behavior for many years now, and some people think that maybe because of his child trauma he went absolutely insane. But some people think that he's just acting, because if other inmates or even prison guards will see him act normally, they will probably would want him punished for what he did. So maybe everything that Irtyshov does now in prison is just acting. Friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.